Hey, this is Karthik from Dabble Lab and welcome to the fourth video in our Dialogflow series where we learn how to build agents using Google's Dialogflow. Today we are going to see how to use fulfillment when working with Google's Dialogflow. Fulfillment is a concept that lets you call business logic from your intents. So let's get started. What we are going to do first is create an agent here and let's just call this webhook agent. Um, and let's just create this. And now that the agent has been created, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to create intent. And let's just call this random intent. Now, what this random intent is going to do is it's going to return me a random number, but from my server. So I'm just going to click on save here and add a few training phrases. Let's add something like give me a random number. Tell me something random of phrases like that. Now, once I have done that, what I need to do here is I need to go to fulfillment and I need to enable fulfillment. So I'm just going to click on enable fulfillment here and I'm just going to click on enable webhook call for this intent. Now, once I do that, I'll just save this and then I'll just come back to the fulfillment tab here and out here, you can see that basically there are two ways on how you can handle your business logic. One way is by using webhooks. Let's just enable this. And what you can see here is you can then put in your own web service, which will receive a post request from Dialogflow. This can be your own server where you have kept in all the details and all the code to be executed when the intent gets triggered. Now, apart from that, the other way to do that would be to use the inline editor here, which is basically powered by cloud functions for Firebase. Now this is basically Google's offering where you can write your code, deploy it without worrying about the infrastructure. For this demo, we will use cloud functions for Firebase. So now that we have enabled the cloud functions for Firebase, what we are going to do is write a function here. Let's just write some uh, function. Uh, we are just going to call it function random which is going to take the agent variable as the input. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a random number. So I have some code here, which we can use. Um, let's say like this. Uh, <clears throat> what this does is it basically takes a random number between one to six, and then it adds it in the form of an agent, right? You, so if you write agent dot add, here's your random number, the agent is going to reply the random number. So that's, that's pretty much all that this function does. So now that we have defined this function, it's time now to map it with our intent. And the way to do that is by defining that here. At the bottom, you have this intent map variable, which is mapped to uh, certain, um, certain intents. What we are going to do here is let's say intent map dot set, um, whatever is the name of our intent. Now the name of our intent was random and we are going to map it to our function, which is again random. Now, once we have done that, we are just going to click on deploy here. And you would see that it's, it's getting deployed. And I'm just going to fast forward to this, um, the, the function being deployed so that we can test it out and see how it works. All right, so now that the function has been deployed, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go here and say, give me a random number. There we go. So the moment I said, give me a random number, what's going to happen is it's going to say, here's your random number and then return my random number from, uh, from here. Now you can also see that we had put in some console logs here. And if you want to check out where these console logs are being logged, you would have to go into your Firebase console, which is at console.firebase.google.com. Log in with your account. And then once you go in there, just, uh, go into that function for which uh, um, for which it is it has been created so in this case it would be the webhook agent and out here you would see the functions option here you click on functions and then you would go to logs here and this is where you would notice all the logs all right so now that was a very basic demo of how to use fulfillment and use it to uh, write some external logic what we are going to see now is how to use fulfillment for slot filling. 
So let's see how that happens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back to our Dialogflow agent. Just click on create intent here. And I'm just going to create an intent which would book the tickets for me. And uh, the training phrases would be something like, my name is Steve and I'm from say Tokyo, right? So this is a very simple intent which takes two parameters, the user's name and the user's city. So the way this can work out is I could say, my name is Steve and I could also say I am from Tokyo. So you get the point. This has pretty much basically all um, utterances covered. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change this parameter name to say something like name and city. And let's just save this. Now once we have saved it, the objective of this demo is to just see how slot validations work when working with fulfillment. So what happens basically is I'll just go to fulfillment here and I'll turn on the webhook call for this intent. But this time I'm also going to enable webhook call for slot filling. Now what this is going to do is every time Dialogflow matches, uh, Dialogflow sees that your slots have not been filled, your parameters have not been filled, it's going to call your webhook. So let's just save this and let's just go back to our fulfillment here. And out here in your fulfillment, I just have some run. I just have some code pre-written code that I'm just going to paste here. Uh, you can see the name of this function is book tickets and it takes the agent parameter. And what I'm doing here is I'm just checking city, um, the agent uh, which is connected to the parameter city that has been given by dialog flow and name. I've saved it, saved it in these two variables. And I've also tried to, um, you know, um, try to ascertain their uh, length and assign it to these variables. Now, what I'm doing here basically is I'm just checking if they have provided their city name and their name, uh, the agent will say, I got your city and name. Now, if the user have given the city, uh, has not given the city, but has given their name, it would say, I got your name, but not your city and so on and so forth. So you, you got you got the point here. So what I'm going to do here is as usual, once I have added a new function, I'm just going to come here and map this intent to this function. So I'm just going to call it book tickets and call this function as book tickets as well. Yes. And then let's just save this and deploy it. I'm just going to fast forward the video to the um, to the function being deployed. All right, so now that the function has been deployed, I'm just going to go ahead and test it out. What I'm going to do here is say something like my name is John. So you can see it's saying I got your name, but not your city. So pretty much this is the code that got executed here. And what happens basically in the behind the scenes is when Dialogflow re realizes that your intents uh, parameters have not been met, it's going to call your webhook. So let's just try this one more time. I'm just going to say, I am from Tokyo. And you can see that it says, I got your city, but not your name. There we go. That's how slot validations with fulfillment works. Using fulfillment, you can have your agents handle complex logic, connect to an API or save users data. I've left the link to the code in the description and I hope you get a fair idea of how to use fulfillment with your own agents. If you found this video helpful, do like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a huge list of tutorials on updated every week on almost everything related to voice development. That's it from me. Until next time. Thank you.